Hey guys, my name is Tristan from Plascom Plastics. On this episode of What's Actually Better, we are gonna be talking about plastic bags. So there are a few different types of bags we're gonna cover in this video. Uh, the typical kind of plastic single-use bag here. We have paper bags. Next thing is our reusable plastic bags. And then things like cotton tote bags. Recently, in many parts of Canada, the use of single-use plastic bags has been flat-out banned. And you will see when you go to the grocery store or department store, these types of bags there instead. These more durable plastic bags. Now, these more durable plastic bags are typically seen as reusable, and these guys here are typically seen as single-use. But for this video, I'm gonna to try to refrain from using those terms as much as possible. Why? Because these durable plastic bags aren't always reused. Oftentimes they're thrown away because people have so many and these plastic bags here, there's no reason why you can't reuse these thin plastic bags. And so when you call something like this single use and something like this reusable, the brain automatically thinks that this is green, but that's not actually the case. So let's call these exactly what they are, a thin plastic bag and a thick plastic bag. And when I say it like that, which one sounds more environmentally friendly to you? So there have been multiple studies and life cycle assessments, which are basically assessments looking at the whole production and lifespan of a product. Um, so the manufacturing of the product, the shipping, whatever, to put kind of a number or numerical value on that to see which one has the biggest impact environmentally. When we talk about thin plastic bags like this, it's actually pretty easy to make these guys here. The materials are often byproducts of the petroleum industry or the massive amount of plastic and, and stuff being made in general. Uh, making these plastic bags doesn't actually add too much you know, to that manufacturing process in terms of mining those materials and getting that petroleum. So creating the bag, as simple as it is, which is basically a, a single sheet of plastic, is incredibly easy. Because of that, the amount of greenhouse gases emitted during the manufacturing process of a thin plastic bag is relatively low, roughly 1.5 kilograms of CO2 emitted. Another type of thin wall plastic bag uses something called bioplastics. Now bioplastics are made from things like corn or sugarcane, and it's an engineered plastic that is fully compostable. Now because additional crops have to be grown to create those plastics, and those crops could be used for something else, or you need pesticides for those crops, a lot of water for those crops, those plastic bags actually require more resources than a typical plastic bag. And in exactly the same way, paper bags are also very similar with that. Uh, paper needs a forest to cut down or trees to cut down, it needs, you know, or, or wood pulp. That wood pulp needs to be processed to make a paper bag using a variety of different chemicals. And because of that, the greenhouse gas emissions to make a paper bag is actually higher than a plastic bag as well. It takes roughly twice the amount of resources to make a compostable plastic bag and three times the amount of resources to make a paper bag as it would a typical thin wall plastic bag. Next, we have the more durable thick plastic bags, and these are made out of plastic, just like any other plastic. It's polypropylene plastic, whereas this is typically an HDPE plastic. Doesn't really matter the type of plastic, both are equally bad for the environment. And these, because they're thicker, obviously take more resources to make. If you were to kind of fold up this bag here and look at the amount of plastic that is used for this guy versus a folded up plastic bag like this, you can see it's roughly maybe six to 10 times more plastic. And the math adds up there as well, because if we look at the same studies, it takes roughly six to 12 times more resources to make a bag like this than a bag like this. At last, we have cotton bags like this. Now these cotton bags look the most environmentally friendly. You know, they look just so, so green. But in fact, to make the cotton for this bag, um, it takes a lot of resources, roughly 150 times more than a bag like this. So you would have to use this 150 times to equate the same greenhouse gases if you were to use 150 bags like this. And that's just greenhouse gases. If we look at other types of environmental impacts that these bags have during the manufacturing process, uh, you're looking at pesticides, chemicals, stuff like that. And therefore that changes this again. Both compostable plastic bags and paper bags are about 40 times more harmful than plastic bags in this metric. Thick plastic bags are around 50 times more harmful and organic cotton or just cotton plastic bags are thousands thousands more times harmful um, take, because they take so much water and resources. So you're looking at about 7,000 times uh, more resources to make this than this. At last, we get to our litter metric, and the litter metric is actually the hardest to diagnose. The reason why is because 
It can go either way depending on country or country, how much litter is getting produced, what type of litter is being produced, and also what type of harm is actually occurring from that. So what's more harmful, a bunch of turtles eating plastic bags or this being blown in the desert or the forest and just landing on trees? You know, which one is worse? It's hard to say and therefore the litter metric is actually really, really hard. But it is known that the plastic bags and the reason why people are banning them is because they are worse in the litter metric. So they might be better in the greenhouse gas and the manufacturing metric, but they're significantly worse in the litter metric. One reason why is because they are lightweight, uh, they blow around easily in different ecosystems, they clog sewer systems, uh, animals can mistakenly eat them, uh, turtles think that they are jellyfish and will eat them. When they are broken down into smaller plastics, they create microplastics that then get dispersed even more and then end up in our food supply, leaching chemicals, and so on and so forth. Compostable plastic bags or bioplastic bags are pretty much just as bad because many of these bags need to be uh, sent to a composting facility for them to get broken down properly in actual conditions in, in the world if they're littered on the street. They have really similar properties to plastic bags and take a long time to break down. When we talk about paper bags, these guys break down rather quickly and release a little bit of methane, but nothing that terrible into the atmosphere. And so paper bags are by far the leader in terms of the litter metric. The thick reusable plastic bags are plastic just like any other, and they're gonna have the exact same properties of these guys, but there's just more material, so it's actually worse. And at last we have the cotton bag, which is actually pretty good cotton will break down pretty quickly in the environment and won't really significantly harm any type of ecosystem. So in the end, which bag is the winner? Which bag should you use? Well, it's a very, very complicated answer. Well, let's go down the list, starting with an organic cotton bag. Now, if you have a, a cotton bag uh, that you already use, don't feel bad about it. Just keep using it a lot. What's really great about these bags is they're probably the most durable out of the bunch. And if they get a little hole, you can actually you know, sew it up quite easily. So these bags are actually great if you already have one. That being said, if you just want one of these bags to be green, it is definitely not your best choice. Especially if you're, you know, buying something like this online, you have to remember, or buying it in the store, you might not see the plastic that it was wrapped in, but when the store got this bag, it was probably, wrapped in a, you know, a bag like this from the manufacturer that manufactured it somewhere in Asia so they had to ship it. And then this was put in a box, right? And then this box was shrink wrapped around. And so just because you see this at the store doesn't mean that you're buying a plastic free item. It was wrapped in plastic. People just took off the plastic around it before they sold it to you. The next one is paper bags. Now if you get a paper bag at the store, generally it's gonna be something for like food delivery and it's not really something that you can kind of opt in or out of. Uh, oftentimes when I personally get paper bags, say it's like an Uber Eats, it's not like the person's gonna to come to my door, drop off a bunch of different parcels of food and then I'm gonna put it into a bag and then bring it into my house, right? So sometimes these guys can't be avoided. But when you do get them, whether you bought some food or you went shopping and you have a bigger bag like this, try to reuse it if you can. I use my smaller bags uh, as composting liners, so I put all my compost in there, wrap it up, and then put it in the composting bin. Next, let's talk about the thin plastic bags. Now, these thin plastic bags are often referred to as the single-use bags, right? Um, but they don't have to be. My family, ever since we were young growing up, always had a bag full of more plastic bags in our cupboard, and we would always reuse plastic bags. My grandmother even goes as far as folding them into these little triangles and then she can keep them in her jacket pocket and she always has a bag when she goes grocery shopping. And she's able to reuse her plastic bags multiple times. Now, if that is the case, we have to look at our numbers again that we talked about previously and kind of and blow them out of the water. Because if you're reusing a plastic bag and we said that a reusable plastic bag, you need to get about 50 uses out of it. If you're using one of these, let's say 10 times, right? Then technically you have to reuse one of these guys 500 times, right? 10 times 50. And so reusing thin wall plastic bags is actually one of the most environmentally sound things you can do. You're reusing the bag that has the lowest greenhouse gas emissions. And so that is definitely one of the best options. Now, if you live in a city like mine, which banned these, after a few months, I didn't have any of these left. They all kind of broke, they got holes. I didn't have any, and I eventually transitioned 
to these bags that I had in my house. When the transition happened in Vancouver, I saw a lot of people buying bags, even though they had them at home. You know, you'd see them in the grocery store, you'd be like, oh shoot, I forgot my reusable bags. I'll just have to buy more. And that was me as well. But just like anything, now I wanna go to the grocery store, I see everyone walking with their bags. It seems like no one's forgetting to bring their bags. And that's really nice to see. Another bag I had, is this bag I got from a tool shop once, and this is from probably, well, I don't even know, maybe five, 10 years old, and uh, it's a huge bag. And so a bag of this size really takes place of like maybe five of these. And so I only need 10 trips to the grocery store with this uh, to counter this bag here because I can fit pretty much my entire grocery haul into a larger bag. People are transitioning from using these bags to using these bags. And naturally in the process, you're probably gonna end up with a too many of both. But what I'm hoping is that retailers will stop selling these bags at the front at checkout altogether and maybe have them just in like the backpack aisle, making it even more of a nuisance. At that point, when these no longer exist and the temptation to keep buying these bags every time you forget one also is eliminated, I hope people will be using the reusable bags for much more than 50 times. That's the ultimate goal that we are trying to achieve, having a bag that we reuse for as long as humanly possible. And in that case, we do have a winner. As long as you reuse your bag, let's say the 50 times, or if you have a bigger bag, right, you know, 25 times or whatever, uh, that will actually be the best for the environment over the plastic bags. These bags here are also a lot less likely to be littered than these types of plastic bags because they're generally a little more durable, people reuse them more often, and when they do reach end of life, say this guy gets a bunch of holes in it, most people are gonna throw it in the garbage because they're, they're at home or whatever. Whereas these things here, can blow away in the wind. They can blow away during a picnic outside your car. You know, they can just blow, sh shreds can kind of fall off. These bags here are much more likely just to be littered. And when it comes to littering, that's the main problem. If you put both of these in a landfill and covered it with dirt, neither are really doing anything. Petroleum originally came from the dirt. And then if you put it back in the dirt and it's not going anywhere, it's not really gonna have too much of a harm on the environment. And so the conversation about how likely something is to be littered as well as the material is equally important. Now I must add in this video, the number one solution of all, and that's no bags. Try your best not to buy any bag at all. I'm sure you have a friend or family member who has a few extra of these laying around. So if you need a bag, ask one of them. Because from my experience, a lot of people have a little too many of these reusable bags.